Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. And today, we're going to upgrade the cooling system on my tractor. Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So when I say we're gonna upgrade the cooling system on my tractor, I don't mean the water pump or the radiator. I mean the operator cooling system. Back when we bought this tractor in 2002, uh, there just wasn't money in the budget to get an enclosed cab and air conditioning. And I'm real jealous of you guys that have that because it looks really nice. Uh, especially about now in Florida in August when it's typically about 95 degrees, 99% humidity, and no breeze whatsoever. It can get pretty stifling. So my answer to that to try and keep from completely melting away in the summer was to install a fan on the hood of the tractor here. I did that maybe five years after I bought the tractor. And all I did was I just bought this simple exterior rated fan that's supposed to be corrosion resistant. And I uh, just used a few screws to hold it onto the hood here and ran 12 volt power to it off the ignition switch. It's worked pretty well. The first one lasted about uh, five, six years until it finally did corrode to the point where, where it wouldn't work anymore. And uh, this is the second one that we're on right now. And it's, it's done fine. The problem is that this time of year when it gets really, really hot, of course, the engine runs hotter than normal. It's heating up air around it. Uh, the exhaust is, you know, going out in front there. And what ends up happening is the, the fan is blowing hot air on me, which, make no mistake, is better than no air at all. But it's, uh, it, it's hot. It's a little uncomfortable. It would be better. Also, this is the biggest fan I could find and it doesn't move a whole lot of air. So uh, what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to remove this one, reroute the wiring, and I've got this dual fan unit off of Amazon, and I'm gonna install it overhead on the ROPS so that it blows directly down on me. I think this is gonna work a whole lot better. I've already gone underneath the hood and removed the power so we'll just use my uh, impact driver here to pull these screws out. These were just some self-drilling, self-tapping metal screws. I did drill holes first. I didn't use the self-drilling feature. Uh, boy, it's pretty stiff. I've been out in the weather all the years. There. Okay. I'll just come back a little later and probably just put some silicone sealant on here and run. I'll probably go get some stainless steel screws to put in there just to seal it up, make it look nice. Okay, so here's the original uh, power line that I pulled off the ignition switch. Quite honestly, it was, you know, 12, 13 years ago. I don't remember exactly how I did it, if I had to remove the ignition switch. But regardless, you can pull power off of any switched point, any switched wire. You can really, since the fan has its own switch, you can even go with an unswitched connection directly to the battery, although I don't really recommend that just because it makes me a little uncomfortable. What the plan is, I'm going to run this wire across in this direction. Well, not just this wire. I'm going to obviously extend this one. And then I'm going to meet up with the actual wiring harness on the other side and follow it down and back along the frame. 
I figured that's a pretty well protected position. All right, so far, without a doubt, the biggest challenge has getting has been getting the wire through this thing right here. The wiring loom comes down out of the control panel and off the engine. It meets right here. Then it goes back in this direction and behind this plate right here, which is sort of forming a tunnel for the wire to go through, and then at the bottom. Well, it's, it's virtually impossible to, to reach this thing with my hand. No, no, it is impossible to reach it with my hand. So what I ended up doing was I took a three foot long wire tie and from the bottom kind of started snaking and poking and managed to wiggle it up through here to where I could see it. And then I got hold of it with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers and pulled it on through. And now I've, what I've done is I've punched a hole through it. I've looped the wire in that and then I'll probably even run some tape on this. Then I'll pull it all back down, hopefully, through all this. And that's the only major obstacle. Other than that, the wiring loom is pretty visible all through the back. Okay, let's give this a try. And there we go, out the other side. All right, so I got the wire pulled all the way from the, uh, the front dash underneath and to the back here. That was kind of tough at some place. It wasn't bad along the frame rail because it was easily, I mean, it was easy to get to, it was exposed, but still protected by the frame rail itself. Um, the hard part was when it got up here into the fender well because I could only get up in there with one hand. So I learned today that I can take with one hand, I can grab the wire, get it up into position and around the support and put the, uh, the wire tie together all with one hand. <laughs> A couple of quick tips about dealing with wire ties. One, don't tighten them up until you finish getting all your wire in place. That way you can adjust it back and forth. And once you've got it all appropriately slacked and in position and pulled the way you want, then you go back and you tighten up real tight to hold it in place. Second, the, uh, the best thing I've ever found for cutting off wire ties is a wire stripper. It, it grabs them and just snips them right off, clean and easy. The vertical wire is on. Just wire tied in place. I figured the back side would be the place it was least vulnerable to being hit. I do tend to go through some heavy brush at times, and this is going to be pretty well protected. So now I'm going to take the wire that's running to the back and tie it in with the wire coming from the ignition switch. And I'm going to use this uh, kind of cool stuff I discovered recently. It's a combination shrink wrap and solder. So there's a little bit of like, like a ring of solder here. And then the rest of the tube is shrink wrapping or shrink tube. And you put the two ends in. Like so. Eventually. And I slide it together so that the, the, the wires are meshing inside here. And then you hit it with heat. Yeah, this is not... Oh, you have to believe me on how this is working because I can't get you an angle where you can see this. Okay, and I'm not sure if it's really visible here or clear, but the solder has melted. Woo, that's hot! <laughs> and the shrink wrap is pulled tight and give a nice weather tight seal. So now it's time to actually mount the fans, and I want to mount them right to the bottom of the ROPS bar here. And I think that will, well, let me just try this out because that'll let me like blow. Yeah, I'll be able to adjust it just like that and be able to blow right on the back of my head and shoulders. Should work pretty well. 
It's designed to be mounted using a double-sided adhesive pad. That stuff usually works pretty good. The adhesive, uh, the rather the automotive grade stuff that uh, you use for mounting like car accessories, and that's fine for something that's mounted horizontally or even sideways. But vertically, I don't trust it. There's that constant pressure, and in my experience, in the heat and cold cycles, it eventually turns loose. So what I'm going to use instead is these really big, heavy-duty um, wire ties. Now, one thing I didn't mention before about the wire ties, if you're going to use wire ties in any outdoor application where the sun might get to it, or even if you, even in the shade, use the black UV-resistant wire ties. The, the white ones will break apart over time, and that's, that's no good. So I was thinking about just loosening up the plate for the canopy and just running the tie around the bar but i think uh it's not really particularly sharp or anything i think just for ease i'm going to go ahead and just wrap it all the way around i think i know how to do this basically i'm going to try and get it in place and then Now, I think I want it the other way, so that the big, the big uh, ratchet piece is in the back. This is a bit tedious, to say the least. Uh, here's the controls are right here. Uh, one thing I, I, I don't like about this fan unit is that if you cut power to it, it loses its settings. The, the fan with a physical switch, at least when you turn it on, when you shut the tractor off and you turn it back on again, it came on. I'll just have to remember to reach up here and punch the button and turn it up to maximum. Okay, so next I need to cut off. It, it has a... Uh, cigarette lighter adapter so i need to cut this off what i'm going to do i only ran one wire because i'm going to run power to the hot side of this wire and then i'm going to then the other side the ground i'm just going to tap a hole right here or maybe just even stick it into this bolt right here and just get my ground that way it should work fine Cut the wire off and stripped back the outer cover and exposed the inner wires. Let's just go ahead and strip off. That looks like it's about 18 gauge. Some pretty thin stuff here. What I want to do is I want to put a put a ring on the ground because I'm just gonna like I said just drill a hole here and use a screw to get my ground. Put the ring on. Crimp it. Make sure I've got a good connection. Yep. Then the drill. All right. All right, so now that I got the hole drilled out, I've got a what's it? It's actually a self-drilling screw, but uh, since it's metal so heavy, I went ahead and drilled it. This will take it, kind of finish it out a little bit, and then 
my biggest worry is I hope it doesn't snap off. Take it right through the ring and connect it. There we go. Perfect. Get some nice solid ground. Now I just need to hook up the hot wire and I'm going to use again those same uh, self sealing, self soldering connectors. Okay, so hopefully I can give you a better angle showing you how this thing works. Okay, moment of truth. Power on. There we go. Starts on speed seven. Goes up to speed 12. Oh yeah. That feels really nice. Uh, I'm gonna do some adjusting to where it blows more on my, my shoulders or maybe one on my head, one of my shoulders. Not sure what'll feel best, but yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. Um, I think it's definitely an improvement over the, the front mounted one. So uh, let's button everything back together and take it for a test drive. Okay, so I took the tractor out with his brand new fans, took it for a test spin, and I gotta say that this idea of adding those little fans back there behind me to blow on me while I'm using the tractor was a complete and total failure. Yes, my friends, it didn't work at all. I was really stunned. I, I couldn't figure out why isn't it working. It, it dawned on me. The problem is that those fans are blowing forward and they uh i knew this might be a bit of an issue i didn't i had no idea they're blowing at maybe you know three four five miles an hour and when you're when you're sitting still like i was here in the garage it works fine you can feel it moving past you feels good the problem is when you're moving forward with the tractor let's say at five miles an hour the air is moving backwards past you at five miles an hour, and therefore it's counteracting the effect of the fans. So when I got out there just at regular, not, nothing really fast, just regular speeds like that I might be you know, using when I'm mowing, couldn't feel the fans at all. So disappointing in one aspect, but I have a plan, and I'm going to be back with something different, a modification, I think that's going to actually work. Now, it's gonna take me a couple days to get the parts in, so I'm gonna go ahead and post this and let you see I failed. You know, that was part of the, the promise I made to you guys a long time when I started this channel, is that I'm not gonna be one of these you know, perfect guys who just shows everything going exactly according to plan. When things you know, don't work, I'm going to let you see that too, because that's part of the real life of working on stuff at your house. So, like I said, a couple of days, I'll have the parts in, I'll get the tractor back in here, we'll take another shot at this, and I think my revised idea is going to work a lot better. And the good thing is that I've got the hard part done. By far the most difficult part of this project was getting power from the front of the tractor through the frame and up into the canopy. Now, I, I know some of you may be thinking, well, why didn't you just tap into the wiring harness that was right there? Well, everything in the wiring harness, it's at that point, is brake lights, turn signals, um, let's see, brake and turn signals. I think that was it. Uh, there's not, there's really nothing back there that's electrical. So there was nothing I could tap into that was a constant 12 volt signal. Regardless, the hard part's done. I've got 12 volt power back there. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of finagling and a change of one part. And I think I'll have something that uh, is going to work a whole lot better. So I'll see you in a few days when we start on the next phase. Even though today's project was 
pretty much a complete failure. We did do some good stuff and we learned something. Well, I learned something. You may have seen this coming from the beginning. I don't know. But please go down there, find that thumbs up button, give us a like on the video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And when you do, go ahead and click on that bell icon. That way, YouTube will let you know every time that I post new content from here in Cliff's Garage, including phase two, where I hopefully get this project right. I'll see you next time.